I will be coming from 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15. And God's word reads, do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed or who correctly handles the word of the truth. So when's the reading, God's word is always blessed. Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence once more and again. Give us the courage, Lord God, to present ourselves as your faithful servants, Lord God, and be and show people that we are your people. Let us let us show the love to them that you have showed us, Lord God, and the patience that you have showed us, Lord God, with to them. Let us be loving disciples, Lord God, in, in, in your sight, Lord God. Let us be pleasing in your sight, Lord God, and let us continue to be a blessing. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So does everybody have their assignments out? Begin the Smith, I just sent it to you. Thank you. You sent it to uh, text or uh, Gmail? Your text. Thank you. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Amen, amen, okay. So the scripture that we were looking at is Psalm 93, verse one. Amen? Amen. So it reads as follows. The Lord reigns. He's clothed with majesty. The Lord has clothed and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. So here, so in looking at that, before you look at mine, let me get out. What would be the theme of that passage? What did you come up with with the theme for that passage? Uh, Uh, the Lord, the Lord reigns, I would say. Okay. Who else? God is in charge. Okay, God is in charge. <laughs> God's kingship. Okay, we got God's kingship. Yeah, I looked that up. Where is that? Anybody else? Is anybody else before I get I give my thing? Okay, I'm gonna go. Pull it back up. Okay. Here's my thing. Because God is sovereign, all of God's creation has stability or order guaranteed and it should and it and is sure. Is no no, I'm sorry. Okay, God's God is sovereign. All of God's creation has stability and order guaranteed by God that is sure, a God that is sure by, it should be by a God, I'm sorry, by a God that is sure and faithful. Do you agree? Amen. 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 Because, you, because, because when you develop the theme, you look at the whole thing, yes, your themes are not wrong, but you, it's just like you have to try to think it through the entire theme. So, oh. Because God is sovereign, all of God's creation has stability and order guaranteed by a God that is sure and faithful. Due to this, we as God's people have security simply because God is. Amen. 
And when, when you try to put put a you know put a theme to a passage, try to be you know think about the passage as a whole and what it's saying. So here, as we start to our Bible study, I have here the New Living Translation of that scripture. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm, stands firm, and cannot be shaken. Let's go to the NIV. The Lord reigns. So see the difference. Instead of it saying the Lord is king, it's, it's saying the Lord reigns here. Mm -hmm. So we see that? Mm -hmm. The Lord mm -hmm. reigns. Yeah. He's yeah, still robed in majesty. Mm -hmm. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. So you kind of see the difference? But it gives us a different view of the text. Now let's move forward. And, and, re and remember that every version of the Bible that we have is a translation of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we go on to the new Revised Standard Version, NRSV. The Lord is king. It calls him king again. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Mm -hmm. The message, I like the message. God is king, robed and ruling. God is robed and surging with strength. And yes, the world is firm, immovable. Your throne ever firm, your eternal. Mm -hmm. NASB. Here we're back to the Lord reigning. The Lord reigns. Mm -hmm. He's clothed with majesty. The Lord has, has clothed and encircled himself with strength. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. So we said, so is that clear how we do that? And what that does, it gives you a well-rounded view of what the author is trying to articulate. Are there any questions about that? If you got questions, if you, if you want to do this quicker, go to BibleGateway.com and just flip through those different translations. Mm -hmm. And if you get to a point, like sometimes, well, we, if not pretty much now, but it used to be, sometimes I would get tired and mm -hmm. I would listen to it. And you can listen to it on Bible Gateway too as well, because you want to utilize all your senses mm -hmm. as you engage the biblical text. Mm -hmm. So as we go back up to the top, let's look here. You see, you see here? And what I've done, I have highlighted all of the verbs in green. So the Lord reigns. He's clothed. It says he's clothed again. He's mm -hmm. girded himself. Mm -hmm. The world is firmly established. It will not be moved. So sometimes to have a visual when I'm working, mm -hmm. here, I highlight them. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? And, and, and how I do it is that what I normally do is I name the file after the verse. So I'm doing the sermon for Sunday. The sermon for Sunday is the title. It's the observation questions, then the title. And then I have the information in there. So I can start working on the stuff for the sermons. So we have the five different translations. Mm -hmm. so we begin note the present tense of the verbs if the psalmist wrote in the present tense does that mean the verse is now past tense thinking of Smith yes I'm sorry say that again you're the school teacher so I'm asking you to, to okay, address this yeah. but, but note the present tense of the verbs mm -hmm. if the psalmist wrote in the present tense does that mean the verb is now past tense no what does that mean from a from an English standpoint? Uh, that it th th everything needs to be in the same tense. So if so it's present tense, what does that mean for us today? That it is today. It still applies. Yes. Mm -hmm. So did y'all got that? Do y'all have mm -hmm. that? So when the verb is in the present tense in the Bible, it still applies. Y'all got that? Amen. All right, all right. 
and we might just end up going through homework tonight and not the lesson, but I want you all to understand how this breakdown occurs. So take out your sheets. Who is the author? Don't cheat or don't use mine. David. So they had David. Where does it say is David? We just kind of know. We looked it up. Where where did you find? I know this is true. We do a Bible study. Where did it say it was David? Doesn't say David, does it? No, so it's not specified. Right, but we know that David wrote a lot of the songs. He wrote a lot of the songs, but it doesn't specify who he was. No, it doesn't. So we so he's not specified. So like if I got up in church and said, Hey, it's David, and y'all somebody go back and do their homework and say, Whoa, Pastor David ain't mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. So we have so we have to go by what we have to go by what the Bible tells us. The mm -hmm. Bible doesn't tell us that who it is. So for that, it's unspecified. Like remember when I preached Hebrews, mm -hmm. I said the author of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because we can't specify, we can't give credit right. to somebody for writing it who did not write it. That's right. Okay. So whom is the author addressing? God's Israel. People. Israel. Which is God's people, yes. What is the most important term and or concept of the passage? Sovereignty. That's good. Yes. That's, but he's I, I, I said supreme ruler, but sovereignty is correct too. But he is our protector and... Uh, we can always feel confidence that uh, when it says that the world is firmly established and it will not be moved that um, based on. But why will it not be uh, moved? Because he is, he has the world in his hand. And he is what? He's he is sovereign. sovereign. He's sovereign. Hey, come on, come on. So you see, so that, so, so there's a cause and effect there that you can write in your notes. Because he is so sovereign, we have stability. You see that? You do y'all see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because God is sovereign, we have stability. And I and I have here, due to the fact that God is the same supreme ruler or sovereign, the world is firmly is firmly established and will not be moved. Same thing. So we understand. So you you see how you have to visualize the text. And then, like you said, he's sovereign, he's supreme, he's Lord most high. All of that's correct. Any questions about that? So now y'all see how I do it a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. but, but what you have to do is you have to use, you have to put your thinking caps on when you're engaging these texts. So if it says God is, and it, it, it then if you are like if you're unfamiliar with the terms, look them up. So when we go back to the top, we know that the Lord reigns, but we know it also says the Lord is King. Mm -hmm. So we already, if we if we put our thinking caps on, we know that the King does what reigns. He reigns, reigns. 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 Mm -hmm. and our yeah. King, who reigns, yeah. is robed in majesty. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's robed in majesty and he's ruling. So it's so what you start to do, and you can look at the different texts and start putting it together to give it more color for yourself, first and foremost, because we want the transformation to come here. We want to actually visualize the fact that God is sovereign. We have to come to the grips that God is sovereign. And because he is sovereign, we have stability in him. But that also lets us know, if we take it a step further, that we have to be in him if we want that stability. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Yes. There we go. So, the main verbs. Reigns. Mm -hmm. Has clothed. <coughs> has girded. Mm. Is firmly established. And I have, it will not be moved. So we understand the whole context of what he's saying. So we got that. And the verbs, you okay, Lady Mosley?
he reigns. So the verbs are very important to our understanding of what the author is saying. Am I right, Deacon Smith? Mm -hmm. So he reigns, that's present tense. So that right. means it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. so, so when this was written, God reigned. Mm -hmm. Today he what? Reigns. No reigns. So that yes. lets us know if we go back to the top, he's still the king because he still reigns. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, so you see how this breakdown starts to occur as you start to understand it. So we know that he's the king. He still reigns. Now, it takes us back. He has clothed and he has girded. Mm -hmm. So that, does that mean that he's, Stephen Smith, does that mean that he's still not, he's not clothed anymore? Well, uh, no, uh, I, he put the clothes on and he still has them on. Because he's still what? He still reigns, he's still majestic, he's still king. So we go back to the verse now. The Lord reigns. He's still reigning, correct? Mm -hmm. right. So he clothed himself in majesty and he still clothed in majesty. Mm -hmm. He clothed, it said the Lord has clothed himself in strength too. So not only is he clothed in majesty, but he's clothed in strength and he's girded himself with strength. Mm -hmm. And we so, want to clear so, up. So, go, so, go that's not, so that's not just past tense, it's past and present tense. Right, so he did it, and he's because he still is. It's still it's still a fact today. Right. So if we look at a, if we look at a simpler breakdown. The Lord is King. He's robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. In this one, he's still robed. It's still armed. You see that. Mm -hmm. So because he's still king, he's st he was king before. He was robed with uh, majesty. He was robed with strength. And today he reigns. He still got the robe on. Mm -hmm. And he has to because there's a cause and effect here. Because he's king, the world stands firm. Mm -hmm. So the original intent of the offer in this passage is to let them know that God reigns. Mm -hmm. And because he's reigns, the world can stand firm and can't be shaken. You see how we get the original author's intent? It does take time. It does take time. But I want to, I'm just showing you. Okay, so we keep moving. So we have our verbs. Are there any terms that you need to define? No, they're not anymore. I need to define. Are there people in place you need to identify? Yes, we can could, we could learn more about Israel. But for the sake of understanding, we really don't need that right now. So here's where you can get, you can get loose at. What do you already know about the people in places mentioned? We know that God is king and he reigns. We know that. Mm -hmm. This list can go on for days. Mm -hmm. I just kind of cut it off. We know he can do anything. Do you agree? Yeah. Amen. He knows all. He sees all. Mm -hmm. He's eternal. No beginning, no end. We know he does not change. We know he loves us unconditionally. We know he's our refuge, our strength, and our help. We know he is compassionate. I mean, I could I just stop there. Mm -hmm. But you see how you begin to put that celebration style together. When you deliver a sermon or when you teach, you can really, you can, you can give God some glory because, see, we know he reigns. Amen. Amen. We know he can do anything. We know he knows all and he sees all. He's eternal. Y'all get me preaching on tonight. <laughs> but you see how it comes together. And it's not because, you know, it's just, it's just mere fact about God. But we know, and we know that Israel is God's chosen people. And we can do more research on Israel. So, this list in our Bible study could grow and grow and grow and grow and grow to give it much more color. But we know at the end of the day, 
because he can do anything. He knows all and he sees all. He's eternal. He doesn't change. He loves us unconditionally. He's our refuge, our strength, and our help. He's compassionate. We know he's our king and he reigns. Amen. And because he does all of that for us, just that list, we know we can stand firm in our times of trouble. Amen. Are y'all with me on tonight? Amen. Amen. We, just, we just going through the questions. Mm -hmm. So you see how these questions build upon your teaching. Mm. You see that? And we haven't touched a commentary yet. Mm. Amen. 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 Can you identify mm -hmm. the cause? And we haven't even got to their questions yet, just a list of questions. And I added a few more questions to it, to the sheet. So I'll give y'all an update next week. Can you identify any cause and effect relationship in the author's writing? Since God reigns, and so that should be, I got a typo, and is full of majesty, the people of God will be established because of him and will not be moved or shaken because of him, simply because our Lord is strong and mighty. Mm -hmm. And see, when you're dealing with the people of God, you got to make it plain. Mm -hmm. And you can't get any more plainer than that. Or you can say, since God is king, that may make it simpler. Since God is king, and we know the king reigns, and we know that the king, he reigns, and he's king, and he's full of majesty. And, he changes. and we know because of him, we are established. We are established. And it doesn't matter what we go through. We are still established. We could have sickness or trouble in our home, but we're still established in him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's king and he reigns. We thank him. Pastor? Yes. It's When it says is, it means is, he is, he was, and he always will be. Come on now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there you go. So you, you all see, it's not as tough as you may think it is. Bible study is not, and, and then it can get exciting because now you're understanding more intimately who God is. Mm -hmm. So now simply because of this, you know the cause and, cause and effect relationship that you have with him simply because he reigns. Mm. And we know that our relationship, now if we want to take it a step further, we understand that our relationship is bonded by our faith. Mm -hmm. And we understand that the, that, that the greater, which is God, makes the covenant with the lesser, that's us. Mm -hmm. And so because God reigns, we are secure. Mm. So I could go on and say, in what ways, this, this is where it gets, it gets personal to you. In what ways does this passage apply to your own personal life? And I said, I said, I know because God is, I really, I really could just end that I can be, but I know because God is, I can be that all he has willed me to be. Did y'all catch that one? Mm -hmm. Because God is. Can you say that again, please, Pastor. I, it's right here, know. highlighted right here. This, this is my personal thinking. It said, yeah. what did the passage apply to me? I know. This is talking about Larry Mosley here. Okay. Because mm -hmm. God is, I can be all mm -hmm. he has willed me to be. Yes, indeed. Yes. And I understand in the midst of me walking in his will, I can't be shaken and I can't be moved if I'm moving obediently. Mm -hmm. And that means I'm moving according to his will. So I'm being, Ray, what we say, how does a tree give God glory? Mm. Being a tree. By being simply a tree. being a tree. Mm -hmm. We give God glory by simply being what God called us to be. And I know because God is, I can be what he called me to be. Amen. But, but how, how you address that question is totally up to you. Mm. I'll just give you examples. And it says, what things might, from this passage, might you want to study later? So let's see. Let's go through this. I'm going to let you all answer some questions now. 
What would you say is the main theme of this verse? I kind of gave it to you. Somebody said the Lord is what? Sovereign. He's supreme. And because and Sister Regina, because he's supreme, we have stability, right? Amen. Yep. Thank you. Remember that. Because remember that. Not only is he sovereign, but it also has a cause and effect. Because he's sovereign and we walk by faith, we are secure. What the songwriter says, safe and secure from all alarms because we are what? Leaning on the everlasting. Now, y'all give me preaching tonight. Yeah. <laughs> But you all see how how this, how you can get excited because you are seeing what God is doing for you right now. What 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 did Deacon and Simpson say? What He has done, what He is doing, and will continue to do for you. Mm -hmm. Immutable. Simply because God is. Hey, come on now. Okay, so I'm gonna ask some questions. Forget about religious language for a moment. What comes to mind when you think about the Lord? A, a Lord. And the Lord. Wow. Um, say that again. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you don't think about religious terms, but think about a Lord and the Lord. So let me. I'll give you a, a, a great breakdown. I love the Game of Thrones and the House of Dragons. So the ruler of the house is called a Lord. He is not the Lord, but he is a Lord. So he's in control. Okay. His, his authority is limited. In, in his house, he has a, he has, he, he has a, a Lord, Lord case L has limited authority. Well, let's, let's, let's look at that. So, so now let's, let's get out of this for a second. Wait, I can just do it here. I can right click. Can y'all see that definition there? Very no? small. You're okay, very small. Okay, a lord, someone or something having power, authority or influence, a master or ruler. That's a lord. Uh -huh. But we know the lord. Let us say. Let us think. Okay. Yeah, the lord has all power. He has limited power over just the the. the Kingdom that he over the Lord has power over all kingdoms. And check this out, Elder Kill. Yeah. Check this out. Are y'all ready for this one? Come on, Ray. I'm, let me hit you with this one. The Lord only gets his power from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The That's Lord, successful. the Lord of the house, is still under the authority of the Lord Most High. Yeah. And he's only a Lord by the grace of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is finished. I, I'm looking at this. Well, look at this little joke. A little joke is that um, the, uh, the Lord and a scientist were saying, okay, well, I, I can make man. The I said, okay, let's have a contest. And uh, the, the, he said, okay, let, we have to create him out of dirt. And the scientists uh, went to grab some dirt and the Lord said, oh, no, 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 you have to get your own dirt. And, um, you know, it, it couldn't because our, our Lord is the creator of all things, especially all things good. And so what uh, you're saying is mm -hmm. a Lord can only use what the Lord, what the Lord provides. That's exactly right. Correct. So he, 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 he can't do what the Lord can do because he can't create. Right. Can't so we understand create. the difference between a Lord. And I think Deacon Simpson wanted to say something. And the yeah. Lord. I see here, I understand what you're saying here. I see here, Lord and the Lord. Now, Lord, not Kappa. Right. No, have a, so that indicating that he can't do anything without the Lord. Right. Right. And a Lord, a Lord yeah. operates with limited power. Yeah. Really, it really, really, it really is assumed power. See. Because all the power belongs to the Lord. Okay. Y'all with me? So 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 a so a Lord is only a Lord through the will of the Lord. Come on, David. The Lord. Right. So when we talk about the Lord, okay, now let, let me let me let me break this down. Let me break this down for you. Now, I want you to see this. 
Now, many times you see this in the Old Testament, don't you? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, right? Right. God. What does that mean? God. Not, no, not, not per se God. That's where in the original text they used his name. Yahweh, which is the great I am. Mm -hmm. But they had so much respect for God. They didn't write, they didn't, when they did have to write his name, this is what happened because they didn't have a printing press. What they would do, what the scribes would do was when it came to writing the name of the Lord, they would get up, they would wash their hands, they would go get a fresh quill and fresh ink, and then in reverence, write the name of the Lord. So when you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that is where his name is. Mm -hmm. The great I am, yeah. Yahweh. So we understand that, so that, that throws a little bit more color on this. The Lord has limited power. The Lord, the Lord, lowercase L-O-R-D, has limited assumed power. The capital L-O-R-D is the Lord most high. When we say he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the center savior, the lover of our soul, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, that's who that is. So I think we're clear on that tonight. The heavens, mm -hmm. the earth. Everything. And the sea, everything. Okay. So y'all see it, how to break this thing down. It is not as complex as some people make, make it think. In addition to the question I already provided, here are a few additional things to observe to get you started. What words or phrases are repeated? <clears throat> Why do you suppose they're so emphasized? I, I think if we go back to the top, And that's why I like to put it all neatly on the computer so I can scroll up and down. But we say, we know the Lord reigns. He's clothed. He's clothed. So why is that? Because the author wants you to understand something. He's clothed with majesty. He's clothed with strength. You understand? Repetition. When we use, Okay, do you understand why I use repetition in church? I use repetition, not so it, so it sounds eloquent. I am emphasizing a point to you. So I, I say, no matter what you go through, your faith must be in God. If you're sick, your faith must be in God. If you're down and out or up and out, your faith must be in God. What is Pastor Moses trying to tell you? That your faith must be in who? In God. That's why we use repetition. That's why Jesus used repetition. That's why we all use repetition. So we are driving home a point. Because we all got issues. We all got problems. We all deal with circumstances, but our faith must be in God. So here you have the same thing. When the author repeats something, they want you to understand that. He's clothed with majesty. He's clothed with strength. The author wants you to take note of that. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. Pastor, can I chime in here with the Come clothes? Come on. Yes. Um, the thing that stuck out for me with the clothes is seeing it different than how I'm clothed. I'm clothed with outfits. I'm clothed with a jacket. I'm clothed with you know, a sweater or something. I put it on, I take it off. It's different for God. Mm -hmm. He's clothed in it. It never comes off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, talk, we talked about that in the beginning. It. Yeah, he doesn't take it off. It's, it's always on him, his authority and his strength. Mm -hmm. His authority and his strength. Um, and then you mentioned something else a minute ago with not this page, the other page. The last page that we were doing. Hold on, I'm taking one of your ideas. I'm sorry, just I'm just writing it down. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you gave me a good idea. Okay, which page? Oh, sorry, but um, not that page where we were just a few minutes ago. Down, I think. Down, uh, where the scripture oh, was. Wait, 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 wait. No. 
I'm sorry, wherever you were just a few minutes ago, or you were asking for us, what did we see? Talked about, um, he got yeah, Lord, and Lord and Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, with the Lord and Lord. And we, you know, we see, we see a king lording and, and getting his majesty bestowed upon him. And we also see how the Lord functions in it all the time. You hear what you just said though? I like what you just said. You said the Lord had the lowercase L-O-R-D had his majesty bestowed upon him. Nobody bestowed majesty upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. You feeling me? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And I think what, 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 it's, it's a term. I, I can't remember the term off the top of my head, but the Lord is the little L-O-R-D is temporary. The capital L-O-R-D is eternal. But see, you can be you. You can look at this in so many ways. You can study this and have different ideas about that, enough to fill up a whole page. Mm -hmm. I could give you all this assignment again and say, "Well, just add on to it," and you can continue to work, even if you just add on what you know about God. Because, because truthfully, Bible study never ends. It just happens to be for a Sunday morning sermon or a teacher. There has to be some cutoff point. Because, I mean, that means that we'd be going and going and going and going and going. But you have to understand. And it's like I tell my students in regular class. What you put into it is what you get out of it. If you really want transformation, you will pour yourself into what you're doing. Anything else to share? Okay. Thank you for that. And I took one of your ideas. And I, I like it for a sermon. It's always on them. You like that, Ray? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that one for free, Ray. Amen. In addition to questions already provided, here are a few additional things to observe as you get started. We talked about the words or phrase being repeated. God is described by the terms majesty and strength. What connection, if any, do these terms have? Anybody want I think to of, take it? I think of his holiness when I, I think of his majesty and his, his authority. And then I think of his power connected to his strength, what he can perform. Mm -hmm. So we talk about majesty. Um, it says here that it's impressive stateliness, dignity, or beauty. It said, you know, as a, as a noun, it, you know, we took a look at the uh, thesaurus, dignity, magnificent. And so all of that ties into history. So they kind of go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. But there's still more digging we can do. We, I, I don't want you all just to be satisfied with those answers. We're giving answers, you know, we're in, a, we're in a classroom setting, but I want you all to think. Think. This is, this is your relationship with God. This is your transformation. This is your edification. This is for your growth. So like I say, what you put in is what you take out. And if you come run in the house and you do five minutes worth of homework and say, oh, I'm, going, I'm going to class, that's what you're going to get out. You're going to get out a five-minute effort. And what you're going to see as we move forward, you're going to have to be focused. You're going to have to be in a place spiritually as you dive into God's word. And we can't do it lazily. Okay, let's look at it. Why did the author suddenly move from describing the Lord to writing about the world? See, these are the questions that make you go, hmm. We all know that the earth turns on its axis. So what does it mean that the world will not be moved? We know that that simply means that the world will be steadfast. 
But let's go back to this question. Let, let's ponder this question. Since we're dealing with our homework on tonight. And we'll get back into our you know, lectures next week. But why did the author suddenly move from describing the Lord to writing about the world? Um, maybe because the because the world is the Lord's creation, which which shows how shows his power that he's all powerful. Uh, David, I think you're onto something. I think I think by looking at the text, the author is addressing God's people. So there's a transition from what he wants to say about the Lord to what he wants to instill in them. You see okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. So he's addressing the people, but he's telling them who the Lord is. And because of the Lord is, this is where we stand. So he's, he's, he's addressing the people, but he basically what he's given them is a theological lesson about God. Mm. And we all know that theology is the study of God. So he's giving them a theological breakdown of where they stand in God. If you're in God, you're steadfast. That, it can't get no simpler than that. But like I said, we can dive deeper and deeper and deeper. And what I want us to do, like right now we're tackling just a verse, but eventually we'll tackle a paragraph. So everything that we're looking at here in just a verse, we'll have to, we have to really look at it to get our theme straight. We will have to really look at it to understand the author, the author's original intent. This is simple, but you can apply this principle as you study the word. And like I said, use these questions. The questions bring out the meat of the text. But you got to think. So question, does this passage, this is personal, does it evoke any positive feelings to you? Yes. Somebody say yes. What, what positive feelings? Who say yes? I'm gonna say yes, Pastor, because the one who lives in God that's in control of everything. The God I serve, he, he's the creator, and and and, and, and he. He's in charge of everything. He has sovereignty, sovereign over, over every living thing. Everything created was by him. And that's my God. Everything, everything I think, everything I do, everything that I am is because of him. And I'm grateful that, I'm, that, he, that he, he thinks enough for me to keep me alive every day, open my eyes, to give me a family, to give me food on my table, to give me breath in my body. That, 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 that's a positive feeling for me that I know that I'm loved by the greatest being that ever, ever that was ever that, 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 that ever existed. Is, is, is it good to know that, you know, we all, and, and, and it's something that, you know, you look at, at, at when, you're, when you're preaching, when you're teaching, but we're all dealing with something. We all have some type of struggle we all are dealing with some type of, you know, issue in our lives. Nothing's perfect. We may be sick. We may have high blood pressure. We may have diabetes. We're all aging. But isn't it good to know that no matter what we endure, our God reigns? Amen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and check this out when we talk about God. You know, you know, I, I see, I see the church folks on Facebook, and the, the church folk on Facebook will wish happy birthday to stars that'll never see what they post. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that you may want to talk to Barack Obama, you may mm -hmm. want to talk to so and so and so and so, but you can't call Barack Obama right now. <laughs> you can't get off this Zoom, pick up your phone, and say, "Yo, Barack, what's going on?" <laughs> but you can get off this Zoom and you can call on the name of the Lord. 
You see where I'm going with this? Amen. And Grace said he's the greatest being that ever crossed the horizon of civilization. Mm. And the greatest being to cross the horizon of civilization is in personal relationship with you. Mm. I said, I have some folks shouting right there. Amen. So no matter what you endure, mm. no matter what hardships come your way, mm. the greatest being to cross the horizon of civilization reigns. He's clothed in majesty. He's clothed with strength and girded with strength. And because of that, no matter what you endure, no matter what your situation is, you will not be moved. Mm. I say order. Amen. It means I steadfast because he reigns. He's a mighty God. And that should be enough to make you, to, to, to encourage you to hold on just a little while longer. Amen. You know what's crazy, Pastor? Mm -hmm. we, get crazy. Uh, we get crazy about knowing as somebody, uh, uh, Aaron Judge gives us a baseball. We get crazy if LeBron James says hello to us and shakes our hand. We get crazy about, people get crazy about President Bush. I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, what's, what, what, what's it? Biden? Not Biden, but um, Trump. before Biden. Uh, Barack Obama. Trump. Trump. They get That's crazy Trump. about Trump. People go crazy, but they won't, they, but, 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 but they don't know that there's an even higher authority than him. We, we look, we should be going crazy on Sunday morning when it's time to worship. That's right. Hold up. We should be going crazy right now. Yeah. I'm just, hey, yeah. If, you know, yeah. recently, you know, with, with the passing of the queen, you know, we, we, we saw, I don't know if anyone else watched, but um, say that funeralization and so on of the queen and just how, so, so speak of uh, majesty, but th 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 that, that was uh, in, uh, for, for in human form. So, but just how regal and how they, all they made of her and just, you know, the, the, that whole dynasty, but our Lord is greater. He, you know, it's, it's so, so, so when we speak of uh, uh, majesty and reigning and, you know, those same, same words are applied in the human form and for, uh, for our Lord, but his royalty is over not just a country or uh, over three countries in, in, in their case. It is over, you know, once again, over the heavens, over the earth. He, he created all of these things. He's, he's ha, has all power in his hands and, and, and just and over all time. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we hope. To, 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 that we please him, that he can take us with him eternally. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a kind of king and majesty that we serve. You know? Pastor, you know what I see in positivity? What's that? Hello? I'm here. I see connection. We have a connection. And as uh, uh, Dignan Smith was saying, these people like David were buried. They didn't, but our connection rose again. Amen. So God lives, Christ lives. Mm -hmm. So our connection, we have a connection. If you are in him, mm -hmm. you have a connection that no other can do. Amen. Amen. And so you see how our Bible study blossoms by our observation. Yes. And so if you want, and if you really want to take what Deacon uh, Simpson said a little bit further, I know we talked about and I think in our first class, it was like, how do we know that it's true? 
how do we know that is true? But what Deacon and Simpson said is that our Savior rose again. Mm -hmm. And not only is that biblical knowledge, that is historical knowledge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How do you know? Because the historians recorded it. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that you need to know about God, as we, as, like I said, as we, as we put some more color to what we're doing, is that God has impeccable timing. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. When Jesus died, when they, when they crucified Jesus, what was going on, Bible studies? Passover. Passover, yeah. Mm -hmm. That meant the city was full of folks. Mm -hmm. So when they crucified, and then Jesus made some predictions about himself. He said, if you destroy this temple in three days, three days, I will raise it up. So because he said that, when he died, Pilate and everybody else put a platoon of soldiers by his tomb. Mm -hmm. Historical evidence. Not only did they put a platoon of soldiers by the, the, the grave, they put a Roman seal on the tomb. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. If you broke the Roman seal, you were crucified upside down. I'm, I'm giving you some, some some meat to so you can you can you can be you can rejoice because he reigns. So then we all know that the apostles were scared. Mm. So we know, and and they didn't even tell the story. The women did. Amen. Amen. Amen women. So they were scared. So you, so, and then let, let, let me take it further. The record was recorded by Luke. Am I right, Sister Sharon? Amen. Luke was a physician. Mm -hmm. He was a doctor. Mm -hmm. He would have known if they had resuscitated Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. But mm -hmm. we know that Jesus, they, they tried to destroy his body. Mm -hmm. But 12 scared brothers are not going to roll up on a platoon of soldiers. 11 scared brothers. 11. But Peter, Peter was also around. So we got 12. 12 scared brothers. They're not going to sneak up on a Roman, a Roman platoon. They're not going to sneak past them, sneak to the tomb, break the seal, roll away the stone, and steal Jesus' body and go resuscitate him. That makes no sense. Why does it make no sense? Because they virtually destroy his body. They pierced him here, not here, because every time you see the picture, they, they pierced him here, which cut his funny bone nerve. Mm. On both hands, which causes agony. When they stretch him across the cross, they dislocated both shoulders. Mm. His body already was beat beyond recognition, and most people die before they reach crucifixion. He was pierced to his feet. So if they resuscitated a messed up Jesus, what victory would there be in that? But that's not what happened. History records, not the, not the Gospels, that, the, 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 uh, the, that Jesus Christ, the holy man, was raised from the dead. That's Josephus. And because of that, Christianity is still alive. Now, Amen. one more thing before I go. Before I go with this, before, I, before we rejoice about his majesty, one thing about it is that when you do something and your haters join your cause. Amen. Amen. James, his brother, was a hater. Preach. Mm -hmm. Paul was a hater. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus revealed himself to his brother, mm -hmm. his brother became a believer. Yes, Preach. Uh, preach. Paul, who says I was an enemy who persecuted the church, became a believer. And not only that, the Bible says that 3,000 were added to the church. Why do you think the 3,000 people were added to the church? Because they were there for Passover and they witnessed what happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. One more thing before we go. One more thing before we go. The Emmaus <laughs> Road. Preach. Preach. The Emmaus <laughs> Road. There were, they were two dudes was walking on the Emmaus Road and Jesus rolled up. And they said, bruh, you don't know what's going on. You got to be the only one in the city that don't know. <laughs> Historical facts. So let me rewind it all the way back to Psalm 93, verse 1. Our God reigns. 
Oh, yeah. Clothed with majesty. He's clothed yeah. with strength. And because of that, we shall not be moved. I just have some people shouting up in here, up in here on tonight. Pastor, <laughs> can I add one thing? Come on, add to us in the chair. Another way was experientially. Come on. They experienced it. That's it. They came in contact with Jesus, the living Christ after he yeah. was crucified. And because of their personal experience yeah. with him, with Jesus, uh -huh. they were witnesses. Mm -hmm. And because of my personal experience with Jesus, mm -hmm. and who is Jesus? Because of my personal experience with the word of God, <laughs> oh, taste and see. Yes. Because of my personal, because of your personal experience, you are now a witness. Because yes. of what you experience, if you didn't experience it, you can't witness it. Preach. But if you experienced it, you can tell the story. And so we go, and so we go, and so you know that there's a tapestry woven from the old to the new. So we follow that tapestry back. Our God reigns. Yes, indeed. This, this is just study passage. Our God reigns. So there's more that you can say about this passage based off what the Bible and history says. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so now we know, this, this. like I said, this is historical fact. I'm not giving you nothing. That, that, that I didn't give you nothing scripture. That's that's factual. Now, and, and the last thing I'm going to say this there, then, we'll, then I'll let you all go, is that if all of this didn't happen, your hater would be, the, your, the people that persecuted you would be the first ones to stand up and say, this did not happen. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something. The haters wanted to ensure that he stayed in the tomb. So it was nothing they could say. Mm. 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 Preach, Larry. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So our God reigns. So, yeah. so as you start to look, as we look, you look, we look at more verses, we will begin to break down the text to get to the author's original intent. And the original intent of this passage is that our God is sovereign. He is the most high. He is the ruler of heaven and earth. And because of that, we have stability. Amen. And we're unmoved. Amen. And so I, I, what I want you to do, since we reviewed it tonight, review it again this week and look over the notes for next week, which I sent you. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back here next week to hit uh, class number three. Are there any questions? But I, I encourage you, you have to practice. You have to do your work. Mm -hmm. So now y'all see, I don't just sit over here twiddling my thumbs. <laughs> you got to put in the work. No questions? Amen, sir. So continue. I want you to look back over what you've done. I will post my stuff so y'all can see. Amen? Amen. No questions? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Elder Kill, pray us out. Elder Kill, the priest, let's have happy over there. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Uh, for tonight we thank you for what we've learned tonight we thank you for what's been shared on tonight lord we thank you lord jesus for us being together tonight learning your word together we ask that you bless our pastor bless everybody that's on the line tonight we pray in jesus name amen so let me amen. ask you before you go i always ask my classes is this worth your time yeah amen oh yeah oh yeah okay yes. all right well, like yes. i said look over look yes. over all your notes look over lessons one and two and that homework and make any changes or updates you need to make. And I will post mine. But you're going to post yours before we get together next week, Pastor? Before we get together next week? I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Because I've been working all day. I'm tired. But the sermon, the sermon is almost done, y'all. Our last <laughs> sermon in Obadiah. I think. <laughs> Avoiding the boomerang effect. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be another one. What? <laughs> My favorite prophet is Nahum. Huh? 
My my favorite new new uh prophet is Nahum. Look, I think mine is Obadiah right now. <laughs> but yeah, so I got we got one more, and uh, you know it's 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 I'm working with it. But avoiding the boomerang. All right, all right. So all right, well you all have a great uh evening. I gotta call Deacon Woods. So y'all have a good night. I'll give him a call now. God bless. 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 God bless.